the third leg of the seven games in nine days stretch for the Prowlers kicks off in Winston-Salem against the Continental Division leading Carolina Thunderbirds. Good evening everybody, Will Wiggleman here with you on the PHP Network. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. It's a Friday-Saturday meeting for the Prowlers here in Winston-Salem against the Carolina Thunderbirds, a team they have yet to beat this season, but they have an opportunity as the Thunderbirds come in a little bit short-handed. We'll get to all that coming up in the pregame show, and it's next. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. Come fill McMoran Place at every Prowlers home game this season. General admission tickets are just $15 with discounts available for seniors, military, students, and children under 12. Upgrade your experience in one of our suites, or bring the whole squad to the game with discounts for groups of 10 or more. Find your best option to visit the Thumb Coast professional hockey team by visiting phprowlers.com and find the tickets tab or call the box office at 810-985-6166. Secure your seats today. Back here in Winston-Salem, we are just minutes away from puck drop between the Prowlers and the Carolina Thunderbirds. But before we get to tonight's first matchup of the weekend, let's take a look back at the midweek matchups for the Prowlers and last weekend's matchups for the Thunderbirds as we look at the last game for each team. And we start with Carolina as this is going to be the Thunderbirds' first game here in the calendar year 2024. They last played here at the Annex on New Year's Eve. It was the final game of 2023 in the FPHL as the Thunderbirds dropped the puck at 8.35 and their game ended about half an hour before midnight and they picked up the win in the series finale against the Columbus River Dragons after the Dragons took the first two. Gus Ford had a hat trick and Dawson Baker, goal and three assists, all three of his helpers came on Gus Ford's goals. But Baker was the hero with the game winner four, 43 to go in regulation, overcoming two goals from Alexander Jemayev and a goal and an assist from Austin Doe. And with the win, the Thunderbirds get back to the top spot in the Continental Division and pull into a tie. Both teams have 47 points. We'll show you the full standings in just a few moments. But first, taking a look at the Prowlers last game, it was just two days ago on Wednesday when they were down in Mississippi. And the Prowlers completed the two-game sweep of the Seawolves with a 5-2 win in game number two of that series behind two goals and an assist from each Evan Foley and Tucker Scantleberry. Ian Wallace made 33 saves in that game as he and Makar Sokolov each pick up a victory in the series. On the other side, Justin Barr had a goal and an assist for the second straight night. He was the third star of the game, Foley and Scantleberry, the other two stars. And the Prowlers get four power play goals between the two games in the series. The power play has been an area of struggle for Port Huron at times this season, especially recently. So maybe a little bit of a sign of change and the Prowlers hoping that they can prove this weekend that that last series and the offensive output wasn't just a fluke over a team that gives up a lot of goals. Now I take a look at the standings for the Continental Division. I already mentioned Carolina and Columbus tied at the top with 47 points apiece. Thunderbirds holding the tiebreaker with the more overall wins. But the Prowlers, with their sweep of Mississippi, jump ahead of the Seawolves and are now in third place in the Continental Division with three games in hand on the River Dragons, although... Even if they won all three, they'd still be behind Columbus. But they also give themselves some extra breathing room ahead of the Baton Rouge Zydeco, who still hold the game in hand on the Prowlers. Port Huron up 12 points on the Zydeco right now. It's Baton Rouge sits in that first spot on the outside looking in. Well, Gus Ford, we mentioned him. He had the hat trick on... 
New Year's Eve. He was the FPHL's Player of the Month for December after 12 games with nine goals and 22 points. He joined Mario Cavalieri in getting FPHL Player of the Month honors as Cavalieri was the FPHL's Goaltender of the Month, but he will not be here tonight as he is currently with the Peoria Rivermen along with Port Huron's Brian Parsons. But Ford, of course, always the man to watch out for, and especially so tonight with a shorthanded Thunderbirds roster that does not include Jan Salak, does not include Joe Kennedy, does not include Tucker Firth, all for varying reasons. And we'll see if the Prowlers can take advantage and shut down, again, that top line that will feature Gus Ford, Dawson Baker, and Josh Keplinger, who has returned to Carolina and signing back last week. For the Prowlers, Evan Foley was huge in that two game series uh, against the Mississippi Seawolves. Two goals, three assists, five points. He was the first star of the night on Wednesday in his three point effort with two goals. And he's trying to get his offensive game going. Of course, well known for his defensive abilities, his as a two-way forward, uh, Evan Foley getting himself on the score sheet this week against Mississippi. And his line will start tonight's game as he's paired alongside Dalton Jay and Dan Chartrand. Matt Graham will be with Liam Freeborn and Austin Federley moving back up to forward. We'll let you know why that is in a moment as Federley taking Jay's spot on that top line. The second line stays the same with Brandon Picard, Sam Merrick, and Tristan Sims. So really the big change is Jay sliding down to Evan Foley's line. Federley sliding in that top spot. Dan Chartrand will be still be alongside Evan Foley. Caleb Williams still the extra forward because Tucker Scantleberry was suspended one game and he will serve that tonight for his actions on Wednesday in Carolina. Mitch Jones is back in the lineup, which is why Federley moves back up to his natural forward position. Jones will be paired along with Alex Johnson. And the Prowlers will hope to utilize his big shot that he possesses, an NHL level shot. And maybe that will continue to help their power play get going and Makar Sokolov will be in net tonight. And as they announce the starters here for Carolina, let's give you again the starting lineup for the Port Huron Prowlers sponsored by Orthopedic Associates. It will be Dan Chartrand, Evan Foley, and Dalton Jay up front. On the back end, Alex Johnson and Mitch Jones. And in net tonight for the Prowlers will be Makar Sokolov, who got the victory on Tuesday in Mississippi as they finish up the starting lineup here for the Thunderbirds. And of course, again, with no Mario Cavalieri, it will be a Frankie McClendon who will likely see for both games, and the Prowlers will try and jump on him, but it will be tough because McClendon's had success against the Prowlers. We'll get to that coming up shortly. And in just moments, we will send it down to ice level for the national anthem here from the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. They forgot to announce Frankie McClendon in the starting lineup. So he just comes out of the tunnel himself to cheers from the fans. Let's take you down to ice level for tonight's national anthem.
And with that, we are just about set for puck drop here on the PHP Network. Prowlers and Thunderbirds meeting for the final two times this season. Thunderbirds have taken each of the first four matchups. Let's take a look at our starting goaltenders for tonight's game. The Makar Sokolov, two hour left, 5-3-1 with a 3-8 goals against average and an 8.93 save percentage. On Tuesday, 32 saves in the 6-3 win over Mississippi. Frankie McClendon in the other goal crease tonight, 3-2-0, 3-2-4, goals against average, and a 9-0-4 save percentage. He is 2-0 against the Prowlers this season. Evan Foley, Nate Keeley in on the opening face-off for tonight's game, and we are underway. As Sokolov plays it over to the near side boards, Jay tried to dump it out. It was kicked back along by Keeley. Wrapped around towards Freeborn. He'll poke it to center, where Justin Bioni's first on it. Nate Keeley behind the net. Jones trying to work it up the boards. Butita kept that puck alive. And it's a flex to the corner. This third line for Carolina, putting in some work on the opening shift as the Thunderbirds start a change. Here's Austin Federley. He'll get the red line, backhanded deep, and now the Prowlers can get some fresh troops on the ice. Schnapp plays it on for Josh Keplinger, rejoining the team recently. His shot goes wide. Signed back on the 30th for the last two games of the New Year's Eve weekend series against Columbus. Got an assist in one of those two games. Here comes Gus Ford hustling after that puck. Heinzel will beat him there. Ford, of course, the man to watch tonight. He has some space in the middle of the ice. Wrist one through and miss wide. He has such a casual wrist shot sometimes. You don't even know it's coming sometimes and that's probably part of the deception probably what makes it tough for goaltenders to pick up Bioni lost the handle Merritt comes in gives it to Johnson feeds it to Jones back door looking for Sim and he just swung and missed as Jones came flying down the slot put a backhand feed towards Sim who was at the side of the cage but he swung and missed and the puck deflects out of play still no score well, less than two minutes into this one. <laughs> Sam Merritt back to the visor tonight. He played the last two games with a cage after taking a stick up high in Motor City on New Year's Eve. He's in on his face off. As winger Sim will hustle after it. Tried one from the outside that was blocked by a couple of Thunderbirds. Merritt couldn't dangle his way out in front. Now Panacek gave it away to Picard. This is usually the check line, but no Jan Salak tonight. And I'm told he won't be available at all this weekend, so Pastuka and Panacek will now have Dominic Dumas on their right wing side. He has the puck now, and he feeds it across the blue line where Pastuka had it stolen by the Prowlers, but Panacek takes it right back. He'll play it back to his defense. The quick up comes from Braden Crow, number 15. As the Thunderbirds have iced the puck right now on the ice for Carolina, their third defense pairing of Braden Crow and Victor Grabenikov, both signed recently in light of the light lineup and players being unavailable and out. Grabenikov signing a four-game PTO, was not planning to play at all, while Crow signed right before that last series for Carolina on New Year's Eve weekend. He ended up getting suspended for the final two games of that series after high-sticking a Columbus player that was on his knees. But he's back in the lineup tonight. And again, Grabenikov, who's played five FPHL seasons, all of them here in Winston-Salem. 
signing back on a four game PTO to help the Thunderbirds dress as close to a full lineup as they can. They're actually dressing one skater short. And still injuries and players unavailable up and down their lineup. That one wristed all the way around. Nate Keeley on it. He took a spill behind the net. Puck underneath him and Johnson's able to dig it out. Federley looks to start the break out to Freeborn. Jones hustling it on the play. He'll get the puck. Winds, fakes, in front. Patted away by Frankie McClendon. Now Batita the other direction. Knocked off his stick by Johnson. They come together behind the net. Puck off the boards and back to center. Bioni on it in his own end as the Prowlers get some fresh bodies on the ice. Heinzel over to Schumacher. Lead pass looking for Picard. Knocked away by Keeley and back into the Prowlers zone. Picard steps out, fires the feed across to Heinzel. He'll pull up, softly dump it. And no icing, so Farmer will have to play it. Tries to get around Sim. Merritt comes in on the four check. Sim ends up with the puck. Backhanded out, and Heinzel shot. Knocked away by McClendon. Heinzel again, wrists it through. I think McClendon got a piece of that one as well. Farmer moved it up towards Keplinger. He gets it out of the zone. Schumacher looking to put it right back in, but he put it right on Baker's tape. The pass up to Ford. He was looking the other direction. And the Prowlers with a chance to clear their own end, but they can't. Clay Keeley with a shot. Gloved down by Schumacher. He left the puck behind, but Picard's able to back him up. Lead pass on for Foley. They'll have to chase back after it. He leaves it there on the half wall. Ford first on it. Foley steals the puck from him. Keeley around this side to Justin Movalli. Trying to move it up the wall. Comes right back to Keeley. Feed over to Movalli, the former member of the Delaware Thunder. Dumps it off of Baker. Sat there in Prowler Rice. Or Dalton J collected. He gets the pass back from Young. Shark Tran backhands it in. Movalli behind the net. We played five and a half minutes in this opening period. Pastuka trying to step past Johnson, who wouldn't let him do it. And the Thunderbirds offside at the Prowler line. No score, 14.27 to go in period one. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. I'm proud to serve farmers because everything they do matters. If I could choose one word to describe a farmer, I would say essential. Dedicated. Enterprising. The most creative people. They're providing food for the rest of the world. Some of the qualities I look for uh, when hiring is personality, perseverance, someone that's determined. We want to be able to hire someone that understands what we're supporting, and ultimately that's the grower. Come fill McMoran Place at every Prowler's home game this season. General admission tickets are just $15 with discounts available for seniors, military, students, and children under 12. Upgrade your experience in one of our suites or bring the whole squad to the game with discounts for groups of 10 or more. Find your best option to visit the Thumb Coast professional hockey team by visiting phprowlers.com and find the tickets tab or call the box office at 810-985-985. 6166. Secure your seats today. Just over five and a half gone here in the Munger Physical Therapy first period. No score between the Prowlers and the Thunderbirds. Port Huron with the only five shots of the game so far. Three of them coming off the stick of Adam Heinzel, who's still searching for his first goal of the season. Thunderbirds win this face-off. Quick up to Pestuka as Panacek going towards the net. Couldn't get it there. The Thunderbirds leader in assist tried to leave it back for Pestuka. Merritt sent it back up the strong side wall. Now Pestuka tried to back pass in front. Nobody could reach it. They battle for it on the near side wall. 
Panacek taps it to the point. Grabenikov has sent it wide. Jones touches it out. Pastuka tipping it along. One hands it towards the middle of the ice and gotten out by Jones and clapped right back in by Braden Crow. Johnson off the boards. Lead pass looking for Graham. He got a touch on it. So icing waved off. And then Bioni handed to Graham. And a big save by McClendon on Austin Federley. And that puck hit Dumas as he was stepping off the ice. No call though. Prowlers wanted a too many men on the ice penalty. We play on. And here's Schnapp working one on one with Heinzel. And Adam Heinzel got his stick in the way of that shot and it flies over the glass into the protective netting. Frankie McClendon with a huge save down on this end as Justin Bioni just turned it right over to Matt Graham below the goal line. He found Austin Federley alone in the slot but McClendon with the right pad able to beat Federley and keep this game scoreless. Chartran will flip it high and out it drops at center, and Foley picks it up. Dump, he dumps it around. Chartran back deep for Jay. Behind the net, fed it right through the crease where Chartran picked it up on the other side and forced McClendon to make another save. Schumacher through traffic, but it went wide. Not sure if that hit a stick or not on the way through. Now Adam Heinzel deep. In on the play, he'll cycle it towards Chartran, who's taken into the wall by Nate Keeley. Now it's Farmer. He'll skate it out himself, and Foley neatly takes it off his stick before the dump comes in right on Sokolov. Schumacher waiting for his team to complete a change and get set. He'll skate it up. Schumacher takes the corner on Clay Keeley all the way around, tried to feed Picard out in front. That was cut off by Keplinger. Baker almost with a steal, but he's off sides at the Prowler line. Port Huron up on shots, eight to two right now. A good start for the Prowler, something that they haven't had too many of in this building. It's a very tough building to play in as that puck went off the glass and out of play from Braden Decker, at least I thought it did. Referees are conferring. And now they're saying it's a penalty. At least one referee is. And now they'll say no. Referees tonight, Michael Levisure and Andy Lindley. Their linesman, Terry Patzel and Lucas Rieger. So no penalty to Braden Deck for delay of game as that puck hit the glass before going out. We will have a faceoff in Prowler territory though, with 11.55 to go in period number one. Again, one of the toughest places to play in the FPHL. Always one of the loudest buildings, maybe even the loudest that the Prowlers go to. There's Freeborn looking for Graham who is covered in the slot. Comes out to Johnson, walks in from the outside, his shot eaten up by Mavalli. Freeborn behind the net, he'll turn it up high to Jones. Sets it down low, looking for Graham's stick, comes to Johnson! And I'm, I think McClendon had to make a save on that one. Jones across to Federley, to Johnson whiffed on the one-timer. Freeborn picks it up. Back to the point towards Jones. Pass is too hot to handle. Now Keplinger looking for a step, but Johnson comes back to pick it off his stick. Freeborn looking to go the other direction. Who's knocked away by Grabenikov. Who will pick it up deep in his own territory. Quick up to Pastuka. Watched by Foley. He'll dump it out with his team in the midst of a change. Now Chartrand right back around. Jay comes together in the corner with a Thunderbird. Puck is being dug for there. Pulled out by Grabenikov. And Schumacher keeps it in. There's Foley. 
to the point. Schumacher goes across to Heinzel, winds, fires, blocker saved by McClendon. Heinzel again in deep, gets it around to Jay, waits in the corner, gets to Foley looking in front towards Chartrand. That was deflected off a of Thunderbird stick, and now a three on three rush the other direction. Dumas on the outside in front, Pastuka. He couldn't handle the pass cleanly to get a good shot away. He was a few feet in front of the crease. And lucky for the Prowlers, that pass just not perfectly on the tape. They were able to collapse before he could recollect. Pastuka turning back up ice. His pass right to Young, who handed it right back. Dumas with a long range try, blocked away by Sokolov. Now Panacek looking for Batita. That one was taken back. Sim quick up towards Picard. Pass was too far in front. Picard has it again in the corner. And now Farmer turning with it. Up the left wing side, he'll dump it around. Nate Keeley looking for Bioni. That pass was out of his reach. Seems like a bit of a theme at points in this game so far. Quickly back in come the Thunderbirds. Butita trying to turn it to the slot. Now the Prowlers the other direction. Two on one if they hurry. Freeborn with Federley. Freeborn fed it out in front. And that puck just skittered wide. Jumps in. Deep to Graham. He has space. He'll shoot. Stopped by McClendon. Federley on the rebound. Another save for Frankie McClendon along the goal line. Jones with a drive, gloved and held by the Carolina Thunderbirds netminder. Prowlers dominating this game so far, but Frankie McClendon has come up with some big saves. We'll take a break. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. Back here in Winston-Salem, 8.37 to go. In period number one, Prowlers and Thunderbirds still scoreless and thanks in large part to the man between the pipes tonight for the Thunderbirds, Frankie McClendon. He's made 12 saves so far and a couple of good ones on some great A chances. Here's Clay Keeley sending it up towards Keplinger. Got through him, icing waved off as Jones will rip it around the glass. Merritt hustling after, tried to one-hand it along. Now comes back to Johnson off the boards. Three Prowlers surrounded that puck and it's dumped in. Keplinger out towards Ford. One on two as his long range shot steered away by Sokolov. The other try was blocked. Comes out in front, Ford! Glove saved by Sokolov, just getting a piece of it as the puck came off the back wall to the best goal scorer on the Thunderbirds. Danger not over, Ford. Stopped by Sokolov, he got the rebound too! And now Makar Sokolov putting on a show in the Prowler's end. Ford still with the puck to Baker. Turns it to Keplinger, his rising shot knocked down by the Prowler's netminder. Now the Thunderbirds with their best shift of the game, but Merritt takes it away. And he'll slowly roll it all the way down ice and get an icing, but a much needed whistle for the Prowlers as Makar Sokolov 
with a few huge saves against Gus Ford and Josh Keplinger. Keeps this game scoreless. Jones able to send it off the boards and out off the faceoff. Prowlers get the forwards off. They can't get the D. Bioni dropping it for Panacek. Poked neatly off his stick by Johnson, but flying in on the forecheck was Dumas. Panacek turning, or Pistuka, excuse me, gives it to Panacek. Farmer wanted the one-timer. Panacek didn't give it to him, and now Foley steals away a pass. Short Tran, headman feed, looking for Jay. That ends up in the far side corner. Bioni curls up the wall. Dumas tried to kick it along, and now Schumacher steps in front of a pass. He's back in, has Foley going towards the net, couldn't get it there. Still on the puck, but now Farmer takes it away. Dumas working on Heinzel, who will throw the hip check. And the puck skitters deep for Dalton Jay. Makes a move and heads out. Jay slows up, sent it over towards his bench. I think Chartran was looking for a change. And now Grabenikov, quick up. Nate Keeley. And it's stolen again by the Prowlers. Now it's Schnapp, dumping it around towards Sokolov, who left it there for Deck. Heinzel up to Graham, and now Freeborn. Graham again, his pass taken by Grabenikov. Nate Keeley trying to work in, but the puck was in his skates. He has it back again. Deck and Butita tie up behind the net. Young comes in there, he pulls the puck free. He plays it back this side to Deck. Federley off the boards, Grabenikov gloves it to keep it alive. Nate Keeley towards the net, off the side of the cage. Keeley with it again. Tried to put it out high towards Mavali. Freeborn got his stick on it. And now he sends Federley on his way. Federley waiting for help, he'll dump it around and get a change at the end of his long shift. Johnson around to Merritt, up high to Picard, across to Jones, wrist shot, hit his own man, Sim. He tips it right back up to Mitch Jones, who gets it deep again. Jones walks, fires, blocked by the stick of Jacob Schnapp, who has to pick it back up. Puck sits there along the boards in Grabenikov's skates. They dig away. And now Jones has it again up high. He'll wind, fire it around the boards. Johnson first on it. And Picard cycles it back around to the far side. Merritt towards Picard deep. And his pass to Johnson ends up exiting the zone so the Thunderbirds will get a chance to make a change. Picard off the boards, gets it in. And now the Prowlers will switch up the unit. Shots now 12-10 in favor of the Prowlers as the Thunderbirds have come back with a couple of strong shifts. And they'll get an offensive zone faceoff after Makar Sokolov gloves that dump in and after this TV timeout. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. Imagine a world without pepperoni. <sighs> okay, enough of that. Now, imagine layer upon layer of pepperoni. That's Hungry Howie's Pepperoni Duo Pizza. Our fresh-made dough and 100% real mozzarella cheese topped with traditional pepperoni and a layer of our classic cup pepperoni for layer upon layer of flavor on flavor. For a limited time, just $9.99. Don't just imagine yourself enjoying one. Come get one now. Hungry? Howie's! Back here in North Carolina, 
Still no score between the Prowlers and the Carolina Thunderbirds. Both goaltenders doing their part to keep this game scoreless. Near the beginning of the period, it was Frankie McClendon, and now in the last few minutes, it's been Makar Sokolov on the other side, making some big, big saves to keep both teams off the board. Defense is own draw for the Prowlers. Baker off the faceoff, hits some traffic. And now Bioni rims it all the way around. Ford first on it, cycles it towards Keplinger. Baker with a quick shot off the side of the cage. Baker has it again. Now Keplinger in front looking for Bioni pinching in. He was tied up by Jay. Heinzel with the puck. Prowlers try and get it out. It comes on for Jay. Backhand dump just past the net. Farmer will take it. Two Prowlers collapse on him, but he's able to hand it to Ford. Port Huron in the midst of a change. They send Keplinger long to the Prowler line. Meanwhile, Farmer tried to dangle, lost it to Freeborn. Here's Federley back in. His shot steered aside by Frankie McClendon and backhanded out. Freeborn back in, one hands it to Federley. Wrist shot, he scores! Bar down, Austin Federley opens the scoring with a quick shot, and the Prowlers have a one to nothing lead. What a rip from the outside by Austin Federley, picking that top near side corner over the glove hand of Frankie McClendon. Fifth goal of the season for Federley, extending his point streak to four. And finally, somebody breaks through in this one. Under three to play in the opening period. Picard plays it off the boards. Here's Panacek. Giving it to Mavali. Lead pass on to Moss. Shot it wide. Chipped out. Panacek regains control. He'll fire a pass across and ends up on the sick of Yuri Pastuka. Gets around Schumacher in front. Panacek couldn't get all he wanted on that shot as he was surrounded by white sweaters. Sim quick up to Picard. Two Thunderbirds ahead of him. He'll chip it up in the air. Clay Keeley knocked it down. Fired it up ice. Here comes Dumas working on Johnson. And he left the puck behind, so the Prowlers will work out. They send the same line that just scored back out. Lead pass is on for Federley. Stopped by McClendon. And he'll gather in the rebound and cover up. Minute 50 to go in the opening period. Alex Johnson, Liam Freeborn getting the assist on Austin Federley's fifth of the year. That opens the scoring here tonight in Winston-Salem. And what was an absolute laser of a shot went bar down just above the glove hand of Frankie McClendon. Jones from the point, that hit a stick, pops up in the air and gloved again by McClendon. Actually broke Jacob Schnapp's stick in half, so he'll have to get a new twig before this faceoff. Matt Graham, Nate Keeley back in it for Again, off the draw, Jones with a quick shot. Kicked out by McClendon. Chipped along, here's Butita with Schnapp hustling towards the net. Butita tried to get it there, but Freeborn came on the back check to defend Schnapp. Turning, firing over top of the net was Jacob Schnapp. The Prowlers get it out, two on two rush, and Freeborn will dump it in. Port Huron gets a change. Bioni chased by Johnson. Off the boards to Jay, who took it back for the Prowlers. Schumacher sent that rolling puck to center ice, but ends up right back behind his own net on his tape. We approach the final minute of play here in period number one. Kicked along to Chartrand. He's in on side, sent it towards the net, kicked out by McClendon. Heinzel holds, fires. Kick save again, the rebound set there. It bounces around down low and it's pulled out by Keplinger. Thunderbirds going the other direction. Keplinger forced to pull up. Schumacher 
Plays it up where two Prowlers are down. Heinzel is holding his face as he gets back to his skates. Heinzel being escorted to the bench and finally they blow it dead as the play was going on around Adam Heinzel. He is in some serious distress holding his face. And now concerned for Adam Heinzel as the Thunderbirds training staff come out to take a look at the Prowlers defenseman. Heinzel still again checking his face. It looks like. And now Heinzel back to his skates and he'll head to the bench and still wondering why there wasn't a penalty called. I didn't see what caught him up high, whether it was a stick or the puck. Heinzel seems to think it was a Thunderbird stick. He'll get looked at, 26 seconds left to go in period number one. Merritt and Ford in on this faceoff. Comes to the boards. And Picard chips it out, hustling after it is Sim, but Clay Keeley beats him there. Now Ford back the other direction, makes a couple of moves, trying to toe drag, and Johnson able to get in the way. Picard turns up ice. Five seconds left, Prowlers need a quick shot off but they're not able to get one. Johnson did rip it right before the horn, but he sent it wide. And that's going to do it for 20 minutes of play here in Winston-Salem. And on the strength of an Austin Federally goal, the Prowlers have a one to nothing lead. Shots on goal in that wide open period, 19 for the Prowlers, 12 for the Thunderbirds. And the goaltenders did all they could to keep both teams off the board, but Prowlers do get one, and they're up heading into the break. Stick around for the first intermission report here on the PHP Network. We'll take a look back at the highlights from the midweek sweep in Biloxi for the Prowlers. We'll also take a look at some storylines around the FPHL, and we'll do it all for you here. We also have the out-of-town scoreboard, which is back because there are FPHL games besides this one tonight. So the out-of-town scoreboard is back tonight. We'll have it for you when we come back. Well, once again, it is the Prowlers holding the one to nothing lead over the Carolina Thunderbirds through 20 minutes of play. Well, didn't get what you wanted for the holidays? No worries, the Prowlers team store has all your favorites. The store features shirts, hats, decorations, and more with new merch coming in all season long. Come find us on the west end of McMoran Arena at every home game all season long or online anytime at prowlersmerch.com. You can scan the QR code on your screen now to visit the online shop. Look your po-ho best with gear from the Prowlers team store. First intermission underway here in Winston-Salem. It is a one to nothing Prowlers lead. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. I've worked at Pioneer and now Corteva for 36 years. It goes by very quickly. This is a pretty noble profession where you're giving back to humanity. Curiosity is so important. I learn something new every day. What's that next challenge that may occur for farmers? You do really feel like you've got an impact on what's coming. I can see how we're making things better. And we have the best solutions for our farmers. And I think we're here to feed and fuel the world. I'm proud to be part of that culture and I'm proud to be part of the company. Imagine a world without pepperoni. Ugh, okay, enough of that. 
Now, imagine layer upon layer of pepperoni. That's Hungry Howie's Pepperoni Duo Pizza. Our fresh-made dough and 100% real mozzarella cheese topped with traditional pepperoni and a layer of our classic cup pepperoni for layer upon layer of flavor on flavor. For a limited time, just $9.99. Don't just imagine yourself enjoying one. Come get one now. Hungry? Howie's! Keep up with your Prowlers all season long on social media. Follow us on Facebook at the Port Huron Prowlers, Instagram at PH Prowlers, and Twitter at PH Prowlers. And you can find more information on our website, phprowlers.com. Not even that much better than you. Should have just got a ticket from phprowlers.com. I should have just bought tickets at phprowlers.com. I got it! I should have just got a ticket at phprowlers.com. I should have got a ticket at phprowlers.com. They should have just got tickets at phprowlers.com. Well, the Prowlers got the honor of opening the calendar year of 2024 in the FPHL as they visited the Mississippi Seawolves on Tuesday and Wednesday. Let's take a look back at the highlights from that midweek series. Hander up the wall, only gets to Tristan Sim. Handed off for Merritt. He'll fly in, find Picard on the outside. Picard makes a move, he scores! That's Alex Johnson, excuse me, I just saw the five from all the way up here. Nice little toe drag from Johnson, and the Prowlers have tied it up at one. Pinkowski after it. Long, gave it away, here's Graham, feeding it to Federley, he scores! 15 seconds later, the Prowlers knot it right back up. And here comes Barr, 2 on 0 with Lynn Barr to Lynn. What a save by Sokolov, sliding across. He has it, and he'll hang on for a whistle, robbing the 2 on 0 as Connor Lynn was looking for it on the back post. Now Scantleberry with three Seawolves guarding the blue line. Scantleberry makes a move, gets it in front. D'Aloisio made a save, he knocked it out, and Matt Graham cleans it up. Which, good for you guys, you get a nicer view than I, but tough sometimes to see the numbers from up here. Merritt, one-timer score! 
I can see his number as he one times that pass from Dalton J. Home. Another power play goal for the Prowlers. And they take the lead back 4 3. Final seconds ticking off the Prowlers' power play. It's muscled out by Graham. Sends it down low. In front, Schumacher scores! Just as the penalty expired, Frank Schumacher puts it home. It's 5 3, Prowlers. Quick up to Foley. He'll send Heinzel in. Heinzel with some space to Shark Trandy scores! Great pass by Adam Heinzel finding Dan Chartrand, and the Prowlers get the first goal of the third and make it six to three. Quick up towards Picard off his stick, turn back the other direction. Lissio behind everybody has a breakaway. Sokolov shuts him down. 10 seconds left on the first penalty, but it'll still be five on three after that expires. Foley out to Picard, one timer he scores! The one-time blast from Brandon Picard, power play goal. Prowlers on the board early here in Biloxi. Kept in at the line here, Bond again. From the outside, stop the rebound, Wallace with another save. Seawolves back in, Nilsson from the outside. Swung and misses the puck as Heinzel got his stick in there. Now Scantleberry sends out Evan Foley, has Graham with him. Foley gets in, he scores! Holy moly, Evan Foley, the Prowlers have a 2-1 lead. And it's poked in by Scantleberry. All the way around the net, harassed by Nilsson. Scantleberry taking another trip around the offensive zone. He'll send it towards the net, they score! What a tip by Dan Chartrand as he puts it to the top corner. Scantleberry sets it on goal, and the Prowlers have opened up a two-goal lead. Deck plays it up the wall. Cut off by Anderson. Comes to the slot and Kuznetsov. Got a rip. Stopped by Wallace from in tight. Back to Freeborn. A play catch. Now Merritt in the slot. Couldn't get the shot off. Has it back. Looking for the back door. Now put it in front. They score. Another one for the captain Evan Foley. And the Prowlers extend the lead to three. Dumps it in right on Wallace. Who will leave it for... Austin Federley, 15 seconds left on the Prowler's power play. Taken away, backdoor play, and Wallace comes diving out to make the save. The full pad stack. Off the faceoff, Bond gets it over to Koch. Wanted to get it back, Scantleberry fires it in, and he'll score. And that one will certainly be Tucker Scantleberry's. And with a minute 56 to go in regulation, the Prowler's have ice this one. No better way to start the new year than with six points and a clean sweep of your division rivals. Prowlers get those points and jump over the Seawolves for third place in the Continental. Stay tuned, we'll be back with much more on the intermission report right here on the PHP Network. Keep up with your Prowlers all season long on social media. Follow us on Facebook at the Port Huron Prowlers, Instagram at PH Prowlers, and Twitter at PH Prowlers. And you can find more information on our website, phprowlers.com.
Let's go. They're seriously not even that much better than you. Should have just got a ticket from phprowlers.com. I should have just bought tickets at phprowlers.com. I got it! I should have just got a ticket at phprowlers.com. I should have got a ticket at phprowlers.com. They should have just got tickets at phprowlers.com. First intermission wrapping up here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. And through 20 minutes of play, it's the Prowlers with a one to nothing lead. Will Wiggleman back with you on the PHP Network. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. And before we take a look back at that opening period, let's take a look around the FPHL with our out-of-town scoreboard. And we start with the Danbury Hattricks and the Elmira River Sharks right now in the second period. It is 3-0 Danbury, two goals from Johnny Ruiz. Corey Cunningham has three helpers for the hat tricks as they lead the River Sharks in Elmira. They're through 20 minutes of play in Watertown and the Wolves have a tied score with the Motor City Rockers. Wolves up 19 to nine in shots in that opening period. We've already seen a fight in that game. Uh, Watertown, so far a dominating effort, but hasn't translated yet to the score sheet. Also in the first intermission in Columbus, no goals, no penalties between the Dragons and the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Dragons up on shots 15 to seven. And finally, in the first period in Biloxi, it is one to nothing Baton Rouge on the strength of a Kyle Stevens goal, the former Blue Ridge Bobcats captain. Those are your scores around the FPHL. Certainly a little scoreboard watching for these two teams. Thunderbirds interested in that Columbus score, while the Prowlers a little bit interested in the Mississippi score as both teams hoping that the home teams of those matchups will lose. But We'll keep you updated throughout the broadcast tonight. We'll have the scoreboard again at the second intermission. Keeping it around the FBHL, let's take a look at some storylines. And we start with the fallout from the end of the other night's game in Mississippi. Richard Pinkowski was given a game after he went to the corner, was slamming Braden Deck into the ice, grabbing Evan Foley as he was escorted to the locker room. He got one game. We already mentioned Tucker Scantleberry getting one game for his actions earlier on in that game and that he is serving tonight. We mentioned that at the top of the show. And then Joe Pace Sr. gets the big one. Six games for his actions as he yelled at the Prowlers bench, yelled at the referees, came out on the ice, was wrestling with a linesman a little bit and then eventually got sent to the locker room. And Pace Sr. gets a six game suspension for the Mississippi Seawolves. Speaking of suspensions, Trevor Babin is suspended for three games as we already talked about earlier in the week. So the Rockers have signed Blake Scott to fill in the gap while Babin is serving his time. Scott is the backup tonight for the Rockers in Watertown. He was 12-5-2 and with a 3.69 goals against average and an 8.98 save percentage, but the Rockers out of training camp ended up going with the rookie, Ricky Gonzalez. But Scott still around the team, as I am told. He gets an opportunity now to be on the roster. Finally, Jake Schultz signing back with Binghamton. He was released by the Worcester Railers of the ECHL on December the 23rd, and now he's back in Binghamton in another big piece with the top team in the FPHL point-wise, rejoining them on the back end. Turning our attention back to tonight's game, how about that, 20 minutes and no penalties. It was a fast-paced period, not too many whistles. It went by quick, and 
And the Prowlers had the only goal, one to nothing, your score out shooting the Thunderbirds, 19 to 12, through the opening 20 minutes of play. And again, no penalties to tell you about. As that first period went by in a flash, as did Austin Federley's shot over the left shoulder of Frankie McClendon. And before we get into the second period, let's take a look at our PHP Network trivia question. Carolina's Gus Ford was recently named the FPHL's Player of the Month for December. We want to know who the, was the last Prowler to receive Player of the Month honors. Put your guesses in the chat. We'll give you the correct answer when we get to the third period of play here in Winston-Salem. Makar Sokolov getting set in the goal crease to our right. 12 saves on 12 Thunderbird shots in that opening period. Frankie McClendon in the goal crease to our left. 18 saves already for him on 19 Prowlers shots. That's the second most they've put up in a single period this season. The most, 22 back on November the 18th in Baton Rouge. Tonight, 19 shots for the first 20 minutes of play for the Prowlers. And they get one goal out of it. They hold that one to nothing lead. As both teams are standing around, waiting for the final 40 seconds to tick off the clock. Adam Heinzel, the late addition out of the locker room. He'll head to the Prowlers bench and nice to see that he seems to be okay after needing help to the bench, holding his face near the end of that opening period. So it looks like the Prowlers still at full strength on the bench as we're seconds away from beginning period number two. And you know, maybe we might want to make the intermissions shorter here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex if both teams have an opportunity to get a cup of coffee and a chat with each other after stepping out on the ice before we take the face off. Finally, we're ready to go as Ford and Foley are in the circle and we're underway. Clay Keeley, watched by Chartrand, gives him a couple of whacks. Keeley able to backhand it out. Comes right to Mitch Jones. Tipped in, or at least that was the thought by Dalton J who was blocked. This time, Foley able to deflect it in. Now Keeley up the wall to Baker. Jones wrists it through, caught by McClendon. Right in the catching glove and he'll hang on for a whistle, 32 seconds gone in period number two. As both teams make full changes, Heinzel stepping out onto the ice with his defense partner, Frank Schumacher, for this offensive zone faceoff. It'll be the check line minus Salak. Again, if you're just joining us, Jan Salak not in the lineup tonight for the Thunderbirds. I'm told he won't be available this weekend. So Dominic Dumas taking his spot on the line with Yuri Pastuka and Peter Panacek. Certainly a much different look. Those three have played together. Pastuka, Panacek, and Salak have been on the same line for the better part of the last five years here in Carolina. So to see, to not see all three of them out there is a little bit strange. Here is Pasuka spinning shot, comes hard off the back wall, and Sokolov gets the glove on top for a whistle and a face off. And those three do a lot of damage. They're listed typically as the second line with Gus Ford's line being the top one on a nightly basis, but they play like a top line. And Schnapp pushed that one towards the net. Now a turnover, Butita in front to Nate Keeley. And Sokolov able to catch that one in the bread basket. Hang on for a whistle. A bad turnover there for the Prowlers. So they'll have to defend another defensive zone faceoff. Deck takes it off the draw. Tried to backhand it up to Freeborn. Schnapp got his 
stick stuck in the boards there, so the Prowlers able to work out. Here's Batita up to Schnapp with a new twig. And it's touched on for Keeley. Long range try, finds the back glass. Another shot from the point, doesn't get on target. And it's caught up in Schnapp's loose stick there in the corner. Pastuka playing it to Farmer. He'll just dump it deep and head after it himself. He and Young battling for the puck. Comes up to Freeborn and Foley touches it to center. Bioni has to chase after it. Quick up, handed right to Jay off the bench, but he passed it back to Bioni. And now the Thunderbirds up with numbers. Panacek to Pastuka, makes a move to the middle, down to Panacek. Pastuka wanted the pass back. He'll get it now on the far side boards and looking back for Pastuka, he was tied up. Pastuka again, towards Panacek in the middle, couldn't get a clean shot away. Dumas with a turnaround try and Sokolov able to stick that one away. Farmer walks, watched by Chartran. He'll end up in the corner, dropping it for Panacek. Rink wide feed finds Pastuka. Try to dangle, poked off his stick neatly by Young, and Chartran chips it out. Bioni will play behind his own net as the Prowlers get some fresh bodies on the ice. Baker has a man going towards the net, it's Keplinger, but he fired the pass just a bit too hard and a bit too far in front. Johnson up to Merritt, and it's touched back the other direction where Schumacher plays it. Sim had it knocked off his stick. Now Schumacher again, almost lost it there in the referee. Mo Valley kicks it back the other way. A little ping pong hockey here as both teams is passing it back to each other. Three and a half minutes gone in this second period. Sim looking for the quick up to Picard. That was blocked by Keeley. And I guess the Prowlers were offside at the line as Johnson came flying in on the four check. So they will blow it dead. And we'll get a whistle and a face off just outside of Prowlers territory. Or excuse me, just outside Thunderbirds territory. So Prowlers send out Matt Graham's line up against Nate Keeley. And this third line for the Thunderbirds. Now they're chatting with someone from the off-ice crew. They've opened the door to the Thunderbirds tunnel. It's Andy Lindley, the referee. You don't see him on your screen right now. He was talking in the Thunderbirds tunnel about something. Maybe a little ice issue right in front of the Carolina bench as you see one of the linesmen Trying to fix it a little bit. That's Lucas Rieger. And now they'll drop the puck. Between Graham and Keeley. Shots on goal in this period so far. Just 2-1 for the Thunderbirds. Johnson up towards Jones. Got through him. Now played back at center by Graham. Now backhand it to the far side corner. Grabenikov first on it. Plays it right up the wall. Goes all the way down. Icing waved off. So Sokolov will leave it there for Johnson. Overskated the puck. Now he gets it to Jones. Up to Freeborn. Grabenikov the other direction. Makes a move on the wall. Has to reach back out for the puck. Now he'll get the red line and dump it in right on Sokolov, who catches it and hangs on for a whistle. Bit of a slower pace here in this period. 15.35 left to go in it. Certainly fewer offensive chances in this period than there were in the opening period, at least so far. Still lots of time. Foley and Ford on the draw. And it's knocked away from Keplinger. Clay Keeley and Dan Chartran hustling after that puck. They cancel into the wall together. 
Keplinger trying to dig it out. He does and starts the puck the other direction. Ford dumps it in softly. First on it is Schumacher. Gets it up towards Jay. Quickly on for Foley. He'll get the red line, dump it in. Comes off the back wall, Foley first on it. They jam away at the crease. And McClendon able to clamp down and cover up. As Foley got it right out for Chartrand, who got a couple of whacks right in front of the cage. And Frankie McClendon makes the save. We'll take a timeout. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. I'm proud to serve farmers because everything they do matters. If I could choose one word to describe a farmer, I would say essential. Dedicated. Enterprising. The most creative people. They're providing food for the rest of the world. Some of the qualities I look for uh, when hiring is personality, perseverance, someone that's determined. We want to be able to hire someone that understands what we're supporting, and ultimately that's the grower. Come fill McMoran Place at every Prowler's home game this season. General admission tickets are just $15 with discounts available for seniors, military, students, and children under 12. Upgrade your experience in one of our suites, or bring the whole squad to the game with discounts for groups of 10 or more. Find your best option to visit the Thumb Coast professional hockey team by visiting phprowlers.com and find the tickets tab or call the box office at 810-985-985. 6166. Secure your seats today. Back here at the Annex. Five minutes gone in the Hungry Howie second period. Still no goals in the frame, and the Prowlers still lead it. One to nothing. They get an offensive zone faceoff, though. And you see Brandon Picard and Alex Johnson right at the top of the circle. And Johnson able to get it deep. Mo Valley behind the net. Looking for Ford, got through him. And it goes the length of the ice. Jones will win the race for icing. So we'll do it again. Back in Thunderbirds territory. They switch the face off over to the near side. Of course, off in icing, the Prowlers are allowed to decide which side to put the face off. And Merrick gets it to the point to Johnson. Sent it right back down the boards, but Ford first on it. Ford knocked down by Merritt, and they're going to call Sam Merritt. We'll see what the call is. And tripping is the official word from the referee, and the first power play of the game tonight will go to the Carolina Thunderbirds. Even 24% fourth in the FBHL for Carolina this year. They went five for 22 last weekend in the three games against Columbus. Well, the Prowlers penalty kill still last in the FBHL at under 70%, but they did kill off six of Mississippi's seven power plays. One timer from Pastuka, blockered by Sokolov. Keplinger in front, that's usually Jan Salak's spot on this man advantage. And he's always a big body in the middle. Baker fires and he missed high. Keplinger not quite as big as Salak, but still certainly trying to do that job in front as Ford comes around the net in tight and Foley got his stick in the way to keep Gus Ford from getting a shot off. Schumacher clears it the length of the ice. 45 seconds gone in the penalty. And the steal by Johnson. He'll come in shorthanded to Jay. Couldn't make a move, but he's right back on the puck. And Gus Ford behind his own net. He'll start out. Thunderbirds beginning some changes. Ford looking to do it all himself. That's knocked off his stick. And Jay gets it all the way down. 40 seconds left in the Thunderbirds power play. It's Clay Keeley giving it to Dumas on the near side wall. 
Second unit out there for Carolina. Dumas circles the wagons, gets it out high to Farmer. Now Keeley, they switch spots. Farmer thought about the one-timer, wasn't in the wheelhouse. Keeley will take the shot. That was knocked down and goes wide. Schnapp, backhand pass. Dumas finds it. He'll get it over for Farmer, the one-time blast. Off the back glass. Keeley gets it deep. Now it's Dumas, glove saved by Sokolov just as the penalty expires. So the Prowlers penalty kill, successful on the first opportunity. And it stays one nothing with 12.33 left to go in period number two. Thunderbirds did get credit for five shots on goal during that penalty, during that power play. And they're up 8-2 in shots on goal here in the second period. Merritt, fresh out of the box, will take this face off and win it against Keplinger. It's rimmed around for Chartrand, looking for Jay out of his reach. And the Prowlers have not iced the puck as Merritt came flying in to negate the icing. Deck tipped wide by Chartrand, trying for the wrap. And McClendon got the pad to the post. Young steps in front of a pass. He'll dump it back into Thunderbirds territory. Grabenikov trying to curl away from Foley, and Evan Foley shows him a seat. Ford couldn't dangle past Young. Grabenikov lost the handle, and now Ford comes in for the puck. Backhander across for Bioni. Quick up to Keplinger, and the Prowlers able to turn it back the other direction. Grabenikov. Moved it up the wall. It comes on for Keplinger. Four Prowlers back. Keplinger trying to stick handle through all of them. It's poked away from him. And now Picard starts the other direction. Chips it in. Sim after it with Mavali. Comes up the wall. Heinzel gets it back deep. Mavali behind the net. He'll go up the boards. Now Federley right off the bench from the outside. Couldn't find the target. Settles down for Heinzel. And now Ford, as the Thunderbirds have numbers, Pastuka with a man going to the net. Pastuka across, and a good back check by Brandon Picard to take the pass away from Dominic Dumas. I think Sokolov also got his stick on it as well. And a huge defensive play on the back check by a forward for the Prowlers. As the net came off, thanks to a player flying into it. Really the first odd man rush of this game for Carolina. And it was a hustle play by the Prowlers that breaks it up. They'll put the net back on its pegs. Faceoff will be in Prowler's territory. They don't let Port Huron make a change before the draw. They're not checking Graham in there. Pastuka off the faceoff, sent it into some bodies. Fed it back to Keeley. Schumacher up towards Picard. Fires it down, icing waved off, so Clay Keeley will have to play it. Trying to get it away from Graham. Now Mavali. Up the boards to Dumas, Schumacher steps up on him. Federley claps it to the near side, Graham tips it along. Keeley gets it out, that one goes all the way down and it will be icing against the Thunderbirds. And this line will have to stay out there. Dumas did get off so Schnapp is out there but Pastuka, Panacek, Movali, and Keeley still out there at the end of a long shift. Prowlers have Sam Merritt's line out there trying to take advantage. Panacek taking his time to get to the faceoff dot. It sells down there, and, but the pass to Jones comes out of the zone. 
Quick up towards Sim, that was out of his reach. Icing waved off. Here's Merritt cycling it down to Sim. Backhand in front, and McClendon got a piece of it. Picard couldn't get it coming down the back wall. Now it's Jones in the middle of the ice, stopped by McClendon. Johnson makes a play on the puck, knocking it away from Butita. Puck will come all the way down. The arm is up in the air for a penalty and it will go against the Prowlers as McClendon hustles to the bench. So the Thunderbirds will be scheduled for their second power play of the period as soon as the Prowlers touch up and Johnson does. And when we come back, a Thunderbirds man advantage. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHB Network. Sam Merritt to the box for the second time in this period. Two minutes for boarding is the call. With 9.31 left to go in the Hungry Howie's second period. So the Prowlers back to the penalty kill. One for one so far, a man down. The Thunderbirds did get credit for five shots during that power play. And off the faceoff, Pastuka sets them up. Panacek. Down the wall, knocked to the ice by Jay. Ford behind the net. Out high to Baker, down to Ford. In front, Keplinger swung and missed. And now Graham steals it. Had to kick it up to his stick though, so he couldn't move the other direction. He'll dump it deep and the Prowlers will get four fresh killers on. The quick up comes to Panacek at the Prowlers line. He turns away from a couple of white sweaters. Pastuka working it over to Baker, diving out, and Heinzel takes the puck, dumps it out. Chartran trying to start a shorthanded rush with Johnson. His pass over to Alex Johnson was cut off. 50 seconds gone on the penalty to Sam Merritt. As Ford trying to curl away from Chartran. Forward to the red line, to the Prowler blue. He'll pull up, and the Thunderbirds set up. Baker over to Panacek, out high to Clay Keeley. He'll give it back. Panacek walking, Keeley one-timer blocked by Alex Johnson, kick save and beauty. 35 seconds to go on the power play. Panacek to Baker, down low, looking for the sick of Keplinger, just slid all the way to the corner. Forward behind the net, out to Baker, his shot blocked. And Chartrand got the brunt of that, he'll skate to the bench. Certainly gets some pats on the back from his teammates after that one. Now Johnson steps in front of a pass, he's all by himself, trying to kill off the final seconds of this penalty. And now he'll draw a penalty, and just as Merritt steps out of the box, it's the Prowlers' turn on the power play as Johnson is tripped up. And seven and a half to go in period number two, the first quality power play of the night for Port Huron. And John Batita is arguing his case. But actually they're sending Johnson to the box. So maybe not a Prowler's power play. As Johnson and Butita 
Both sit in the sin bins. And the scoring table wants to know what's up. I am also curious what's up. We'll find out momentarily. It's four aside on the ice for this faceoff. So that's what it looks like it will be. Four on four. It's Butita for tripping. And I can only assume that would mean Johnson for embellishment. As Merritt wins the faceoff, Heinzel steps down the boards. Merritt around behind to Picard. Steps out and kick save by McClendon. So it is indeed Johnson for embellishment and Batita for tripping. Fans want another call, they won't get it. Nate Keeley to the backhand goes wide. Now Schumacher turned it over, Schnapp whiffed on the shot. Fed it out high to Farmer, back to Schnapp. Gives it to the point to Bioni. Tried to dump it down deep. Nate Keeley dumped by Adam Heinzel and he'll get a penalty. Cross checking is the signal from the referee and the Thunderbirds will get a four on three man advantage. Here with 6.46 to go in period number two. And this time the fans do get the penalty they were clamoring for. So four on three. Advantage for Carolina for a minute and 17 seconds and then it will be five on four the rest of the way. Graham, Federley, and Jones out there to kill. Well, the Prowlers' top defenseman, Alex Johnson, sitting in the box for the majority of this time. As Pastuka plays it up to Panacek. Out there with Baker and Ford. So four forwards out there for Carolina as Pastuka whips it across for Baker. Now to Panacek. Pastuka with space, he fires wide, and off the back wall, Jones is able to clear. 45 seconds left to go in the four on three, now a minute 25 left in the Thunderbirds power play. As Panacek steps in, going all the way around to Ford. Pastuka to Ford, and that pass off his stick. Pastuka again. To Baker, back, one-timer, stopped by Sokolov. Foley able to find that puck and fire it down right on McClendon. Johnson and Butita set to come out of the box in just a few seconds. And it'll be five on four for Carolina. As Pinacek steps around, Graham gets to the front and could, couldn't pull the trigger on the shot. Butita fresh out of the box though, keeps it alive. It's now five on four for the next 35 seconds. Keeley to Panacek, down to Ford. Out in front, Baker fires, sliding block by the Prowlers. Butita turned it wide. Keeley to Baker, in tight, bounces around, sliding play, where is it? It's underneath Sokolov, and he has it for a whistle. The first one was a sliding block, and then that second one, they tried to slide it five hole on Sokolov, and he didn't know where it was. He looked behind him, but he had it underneath. 15 seconds left on the penalty to Adam Heinzel. And 15 seconds away from getting back to five on five, the Prowlers hope as Nate Keeley had it tied up by Foley. Federley turns and fires it out. Gloved down by Farmer. Schnapp fires it across towards Butita. That puck squirts out of the zone. Farmer back in, back to five on five. And Sokolov giving a little leather flash to Nate Keeley. We'll take a timeout. Prowlers PK coming up big. It's still one to nothing. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey. 
on the PHP Network. Imagine a world without pepperoni. <sighs> okay, enough of that. Now, imagine layer upon layer of pepperoni. That's Hungry Howie's Pepperoni Duo Pizza. Our fresh-made dough and 100% real mozzarella cheese topped with traditional pepperoni and a layer of our classic cup pepperoni for layer upon layer of flavor on flavor. For a limited time, just $9.99. Don't just imagine yourself enjoying one. Come get one now. Hungry? Howie's! Back here in Winston-Salem, Prowler's penalty kill and Makar Sokolov coming up big over these last few minutes. It's still 1-0 Prowler's with 4.43 left to go in the second period. Will Wiggleman back with you on the PHP Network. Thanks so much for joining us tonight in a lo low scoring game, another one between these two teams. We'll have another face off as that one popped right into Sokolov's glove. Carolina up on shots in this period, 12 to six. They've had a couple of power plays. And Butita from the outside has sent it on net. Sokolov may have gotten a piece as it went through. A dig away on the boards. Butita pulls it out, gives to Keeley, and Sokolov got a piece of that shot. Jones up the near side boards. The card couldn't get it out. Keeley still battling. Comes around behind the net. Nick Keeley on it. Turning on Johnson. And Batita in front. And Keeley couldn't get a clean whack at that one. Bioni just hit the crossbar on a long range try. That was a knuckle puck. And just caught the iron. Fans want another penalty. We play on. As Ford fires it across to Farmer, got through his stick, and goes deep where Butita sent a centering pass through traffic. Finally collected by Baker. He'll send it right back down the direction of the Thunderbirds captain. Prowlers pinned in their own end. Thunderbirds were able to make a change as they have the top line out there. Here's Baker firing it over towards Farmer. Now the puck will come out of the Prowlers end, they'll get a couple of forwards off. Here's Ford back in, and Sim does it, doing all he can to force Gus Ford to the wall. Wrist shot from the point, blockered out by Sokolov off the stick of Grabenikov. Puck still deep in Prowler ice. Ford in front, couldn't find Baker. Grabenikov's drive, gloved and held by Makar Sokolov. And now the Prowlers get a breather. And they'll get to change up the lines. That whole shift deep in Port here on ice. Two fifty-three left to go in period number two. And the Thunderbirds trying to tie this game. Evan Foley's line out there. They tie it up. Keplinger down to the ice, and now the Prowlers do get out. Tipped along by Foley. He'll head after it with Grabenikov. They dig away behind the net. A couple of Prowlers in there. Pops out to Schumacher on the half wall. Down all the way around towards Shirktrand. Tried to get it back deep. Jay couldn't do it either, but he'll recollect at center. And now he'll skate up ice and chip it in. Dalton Jay briefly a Carolina Thunderbird back in the 17-18 season before he was traded to Port Huron. Only played a few games here. He'll head off the ice for a change as the Prowlers get fresh bodies on the ice under two to play in period two. 
Clay Keeley up to Baker. Heinzel takes it away at the Prowlers line. Dalton Young whiffed on the clearing attempt. Now he'll find Heinzel, has to play it off the boards. Federley gets it out. He'll skate right back into the puck. Across it comes towards Young. He'll pick it up from the outside. And McClendon forced to make a save. He got taken out by his own man, Grabenikov. McClendon back to his skates and set for this next shot. Just as soon as it comes, here's Graham getting it down towards Federley. Poked away by Panacek and then back in front, Graham was stopped by the pad of McClendon. Dumped back in by Deck, doesn't get deep. Prowlers were in the midst of a change. We're under a minute to go in the second period. That puck fired all the way down and icing called against the Prowlers with 51.3 seconds up on the clock. Prowlers trying to get out of this period, one that's been dominated mostly by the Thunderbirds with the help of a few power plays. Three man advantages to be exact for Carolina in this period. Farmer walks, sends one in, stopped by Sokolov, the rebound sits there at the top of the crease. And finally it's worked out by Young. He'll get the red line, clap it in on McClendon. Prowlers get one last change going in the final 35 seconds. Farmer. Tried to send it up the wall, hit his own man Bioni. This time he'll go to the near side and soccer it out by Panacek. Bioni off the wall, turned over. Sim sent it down low, sicked away. 14 seconds on the clock as Merritt circles the net. Gets it out high to Johnson. Trying to settle down a bouncing puck, he'll just fire it to the corner. Farmer up to Butita. Long range pass finds Ford. That's going to do it for 40 minutes of play here at the Annex. No goals in that second period. The only one, Austin Federley's all the way back in the opening frame. It is one nothing Port Huron as we get set for the second intermission. Shots on goal in that period favoring the Thunderbirds, 19 to 11. And Carolina has taken the shots advantage for the game, 31 to 30. Coming up in the second intermission, the Continental Catch-Up with all the highlights from around the Continental Division, what you missed when you were watching the Prowlers over the New Year's Eve weekend. We'll also take a look at the Prowlers' upcoming schedule, which I promise involves home games, so stick around for all that. We'll also take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard, the game stats, and much more. It's all coming up on the intermission report here on the BHP Network. But once again, one nothing Prowlers through 40 minutes of play here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. To secure your seats for the Prowlers' next home game as they host the Watertown Wolves with puck drop at McBorn Place scheduled for 7.05 p.m. Tickets are available online at phprowlers.com slash tickets by phone at 810-985-6166 or by scanning the QR code on your screen now. That's online at phprowlers.com slash tickets by phone at 810-985-6166 or scan the QR code on your screen now to experience Prowlers hockey live and in person at the old barn McMoran place the way it's meant to be enjoyed. That next game coming up on January the 12th at home against the Watertown Wolves. First inter or second intermission underway here at the Annex. One nothing Prowlers, and we'll take a break before the Continental Catch-Up. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. I've worked at Pioneer and now Corteva for 36 years. It goes by very quickly. This is a pretty noble profession for your giving back to humanity. Curiosity is so important. I learn something new every day. What's that next challenge that may occur for farmers? 
You do really feel like you've got an impact on what's coming. I can see how we're making things better. And we have the best solutions for our farmers. And I think we're here to feed and fuel the world. I'm proud to be part of that culture and I'm proud to be part of the company. Imagine a world without pepperoni. Ugh, okay, enough of that. Now, imagine layer upon layer of pepperoni. That's Hungry Howie's Pepperoni Duo Pizza. Our fresh-made dough and 100% real mozzarella cheese topped with traditional pepperoni and a layer of our classic cup pepperoni for layer upon layer of flavor on flavor. For a limited time, just $9.99. Don't just imagine yourself enjoying one. Come get one now. Hungry? Howie's! Keep up with your Prowlers all season long on social media. Follow us on Facebook at the Port Huron Prowlers, Instagram at PH Prowlers, and Twitter at PH Prowlers. And you can find more information on our website, phprowlers.com. got a ticket from phprowlers.com. I should have just bought tickets at phprowlers.com. I got it! I should have just got a ticket at phprowlers.com. I should have got a ticket at phprowlers.com. They should have just got tickets at phprowlers.com. The calendar has flipped to January in this past week. The Continental Division saw five of its six teams close out 2023 and saw two of them open up 2024. Let's take a look back at the highlights on this week's Continental Catch-Up. The top spot in the division was on the line as Carolina faced Columbus in a 3-3. Three three. The Thunderbirds sat three points ahead of the Dragons for first place. 
The first game was in Columbus, and the fans had just found their seats before they jumped out of them. And on our broadcast here, we appreciate you being with us. We're underway. There's a chance in front by Columbus right off the hop. Wickline couldn't come up with it. Puck to the right point. Underwood over the left side. Shot coming in. They score! Alexander Jemayev with the tip on the wrister from the left point just 16 seconds into the first period. River Dragons strike first. It's 1-0. That lead didn't last two minutes before Nate Keeley tied things up. Then... The Dragons' power play went to work as Josh Petrantonio restored the lead a few minutes before Jemayev potted his second of the night. Yuri Pastuka brought the birds within one in the middle frame, but then the hats hit the ice. In over the line, Shinkarik, the end of the slot, looking for Swan, Swan to the left side. Wraps it in behind the net. Salak has no stick and missing a glove. Swan in front, here's a chance, Jemayev and he scores! Alexander Jemayev's got the hat trick! Columbus held for most of the third, but Carolina made the home crowd sweat. Ford into the slot, a shot, and it takes a deflection high off of the glass. Clay Keeley controls, ball quill on him. Gets it over to Ford. Ford dancing in a one-timer, and they score! With the man in the box, Eminem empty, Dawson Baker. With 4.29 remaining in the third period, gets his 50th goal of his FPHL career and makes it a one-goal game here in Columbus. They couldn't find the equalizer, and Petra Antonio hit the empty net to seal the deal. The series shifted to Winston-Salem the next night, and this time it was Carolina who struck first. Underwood trying to dump it in. Whiffed. And here come the Thunderbirds the other way. Dominic Dumas. Dances by him, Dumas, backhands, one to Salak, they score! Petrantonio answered late in the opening period to tie the score heading into the break. Jacob Schnapp gave the Thunderbirds the lead back in the middle frame, but in the final minute, Kyle Moore leveled the score again. Less than two and a half minutes into the third, Columbus took its first lead. Storjahan wins the draw, River Dragons start with possession, here's Doe right side, he scores! Austin Doe! Walks it in for the right point. He beats Cavalieri high glove and a power play goal for the River Dragons. Makes it 3-2 Columbus. And then a few minutes later, they got some insurance. One of the Thunderbirds players went down back there. Fans thought it should have been a tripping call. Instead, it's Ford carrying it up at center, but he turned it over. Back on the right side, here's McDonald. McDonald in, leaving it to Moore. Moore, McDonald in front, chipped towards the goal. They score! Deflected in front, Hunter put it towards the net, and then Kyle Moore tips it home. Moore's got his second of the game, and it's now a two-goal lead for Columbus. It's 4-2. That goal turned out to be the game winner as Carolina scored a power play goal with the extra attacker for the second straight night, but Columbus holds on to take the outright division lead. The series concluded in a late New Year's Eve affair, the final puck drop of 2023 in the FPHL. Gus Ford opened the scoring early on for the home side, but Alexander Jemayev responded a few minutes later. This time, it was Carolina taking and extending the lead as Salak put the birds back in front and Ford made it a two-goal game heading into the intermission. Less than a minute into the second, Austin Doe pulled Columbus within one, but Carolina's leading scorer had another in him. Ford has him in the slot, back to Vestuka, now to Baker. Baker throws it into the skates of Ford. He holds Ford, Ford a shot. There we go. Trickles in. That's what we needed. That's what we needed. A hat trick for Gus Ford, his second of the year. Jemayev made it a one goal game heading into the third and then early in the final frame, Columbus found the equalizer. But I guess they're basically saying, no, it was not a clearing attempt. So the River Dragons with the power play. Here's a chance for Doe in back door. They score! A power play goal for Storjahan. Moore was injured right off the faceoff. He's back up and okay. He took a stick up high, but the River Dragons score immediately on the power play. Overtime was all this series needed, and the score remained tied with under five to play. But the Thunderbirds found one more. Wax it along, Salak gets a touch. Ford trying to get out to Baker, he does on the second chance. Baker waits, he shoots, he scores! 
Carolina pulls out the final game of the series to tie the Dragons back up in the points column and regain the division lead. Stop me if you've heard this one before. The Baton Rouge Zydeco visited the Mississippi Coast Coliseum to take on the Sea Wolves. The teams battled in a two-game set on Friday and Saturday. Dalton Anderson opened the scoring just over a minute in, but then Baton Rouge took over. Matthias Telstrom tied the game about five minutes before Brendan Hussey gave the Zydeco the lead. Less than a minute into the second, the advantage grew. Seawolves defense proving strong, but stolen away by the Zydeco. Puck in front of the net, backhanded shot, and just kind of laid in as immediately after Joe Pace hits the celebrating Zydeco player. But Mississippi battled back as Danny Lissio and Yanni Liarocco scored to tie it. Hussey gave his team the lead right back 43 seconds later, but Hugo Koch evened the score in the final minute of the stanza. Past the midway point of the third, Liarocos gave the Seawolves their first lead since the opening period. 17 seconds later, guess who scored again? They scored again! Must have been off, off a deflection. They were trying. That's where this forecheck comes so important to this team. It's so important for this team, and that's a hat trick. Mississippi comes back to take game one behind the hat trick from the FPHL's leading scorer. The next night, the first goal of the game came less than two minutes in again, but this time, it belonged to the roadside. Kyle Stevens comes away with it, tries to put it in front, they shoot and score. But Hugo Koch found the tying goal before the end of the opening period. Noah Robinson scored the only goal of the second short-handed, and less than a minute into the third, he did it again. Once again, one minute remaining in the, the holding penalty to David Aslan. Joachim Nielsen hits the deck. They'll get it up. And a potential breakaway two-on-one. Shoot, and they score shorthanded. That is, I believe, Noah Robinson again with a shorthanded goal. Hussey added another late in the game, and they traded goals in the final minute as Baton Rouge earns the weekend split. As seen here on the PHP Network, the Prowlers ended 2023 with a 3-3 against the Motor City Rockers. Mitch Jones scored the overtime winner in the first game, but Motor City took the next two, including a penalty-filled affair in Frazier on New Year's Eve. The Prowlers then travel to Mississippi and face the Seawolves Tuesday and Wednesday, coming away with six points and a clean sweep after two three-goal wins. Overall in the Continental Division, three players with hat-tricks on New Year's Eve weekend, and now they're offense skating in 2024. Now that you're all caught up, stay tuned for more action right here on the PHP Network. Second intermission wrapping up here in Winston-Salem and we have the same score at the end of the second that we did at the end of the first. one nothing Prowlers. So he gets set for the final 20 minutes of regulation. It's been a good old fashioned goaltending duel between Frankie McClendon and Makar Sokolov. Will Wiggleman back with you on the PHP Network. Before we take a look back at that second period, take a look at our out of town scoreboard. We start with Elmira and Danbury. Johnny Ruiz has the hat trick and Corey Cunningham has added a goal to his three assists. Ruiz has an assist as well, four point Knights for each of them, 6-1 Danbury as they play in the third. Rockers and Wolves are at the second intermission and they found goals in that middle period. 3-2 Watertown as they get set for period number three. The River Dragons have all three in the second period and they lead the Blue Ridge Bobcats three to nothing as they get set for period number three as well. And finally, in the second period, Baton Rouge and Mississippi are knotted up 
at one goal apiece. Kyle Stevens in the first, Danny Lissio in the second are your goal scorers there. And of course here, it's still one nothing Prowlers. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for Port Huron. Of course tomorrow night they'll finish up the seven games in nine days stretch and they'll get multiple days off in a row, something they haven't had in this calendar year of 2024. And then they'll return home for a three and three with the Watertown Wolves at McMoran Place. 7.05 and 6.05 are your start times Friday and Saturday, then 3.05 on Sunday. And that will be the return of former captain Dustin Henning. Spent three years with the team and was the captain for the last two. So he'll be back with back at McMoran Place, so be sure to come out Friday night to welcome him back to McMoran and cheer on the Prowlers against his Watertown Wolves, where he is also the captain. Take a look back at tonight's game here in Carolina. Thunderbirds up on shots 31 to 30, but Austin Federley has the only goal of the game so far from all the way back in the first period. And the Prowlers able to kill off three Thunderbirds power plays in that second frame. And that is a huge reason why they are ahead right now, one to nothing, as we get set for third period action here from the Annex. Before we can start the third period, another look at our PHP Network trivia question. Gus Ford was named the FPHL's Player of the Month for December. Who was the last Prowlers player to receive the Player of the Month honors? And the answer is Dalton J, who is the FPHL's Player of the Month back in December of 2022, last season. So he is your PHP Network trivia question answer for tonight, Dalton J. Makar Sokolov getting set in the goal crease to our left. 31 saves on 31. Carolina shots up to this point. Frankie McClendon in the goal crease to our right. 29 saves on 30 Prowler shots to this point. And an all important third period about to drop the puck. Here between Gus Ford and Evan Foley. And we are underway in the final 20 minutes of regulation and what has been a great game between these two teams. Plenty of great goaltending, some good defense as well. And an absolute snipe from Austin Federley, the difference so far. And it drops to Move Valley. He'll play it over to Clay Keeley. Looks like the Thunderbirds getting some Different looks on the defensive side. Here's Jay trying to work around Keeley. Backhander just goes wide. And now forward behind his own net. Head up, he'll play it off the glass and out to center. Hines will after it in his own end. Both teams making changes. As Heinzel gives it over to Schumacher in the near side corner. And then Heinzel went down away from the puck. He'll head back to the bench. Sim has it, looking for Merritt. They couldn't connect. And now Sim pushes it over to Farmer. Pass got through Keplinger, so Deck able to keep it in momentarily. Now the Thunderbirds get out, but Panacek couldn't handle that feed. Bioni curling away from Brandon Picard. We get the red line, now the Prowler blue from the outside, rising shot, catches the back glass. Reborn couldn't keep it moving out to center, so Bioni gets a drive that goes off of something and ends up in the near side corner. Bioni this time with a shot that got through, steered away by Sokolov, and Freeborn will skate it out. He gets the red line, dumps it around, Federley first on it in the corner. Taps it behind the net. Freeborn picks it up on the other side. Tried to cycle it. Goes down to the ice. And the Thunderbirds able to get it out. Jay, quick up to Graham, touches it for Freeborn. Makes a move, 
Couldn't get back to the forehand to get a shot off though. And now Crow giving Freeborn a couple extra shoves and a tap on the head with his stick. He's going to go to the penalty box for hooking. As Freeborn was trying to make that move and now the Prowlers will get their first quality power play of the game. They're just over two minutes into period number three. So you get the first look tonight at the sixth ranked power play in the FBHL at 22.6%. They were four for 11 against the Mississippi Seawolves. Found plenty of success down in Biloxi. Hoping for some more here to get themselves a little insurance. Johnson walks down the wall, gets the pass back. Mississippi's power penalty kill is fifth at 80.2%. They gave up six goals on 18 opportunities to Columbus. Jones with space, wrist shot blocked by Nate Keeley and he'll dump it down. 30 seconds gone on the power play. It's Johnson. Heading up ice, taken away by Butita. And Jones able to pick it back up. He finds Graham. Prowlers will start to switch up the unit as Freeborn battles for it at the blue line. And sent down towards Sokolov. Jones with Four other new Prowlers on the ice. Jones will head to the bench to finish the change. Here's Jay flying in around the cage. Get it out high to Picard. Now Foley back towards Picard. The pass got through him and it comes all the way down. Picard, Merritt, Jay, and Foley on this power play unit. Picard and Merritt had power play goals in Mississippi as McClendon will clamp the glove on top with 26 seconds left on the Prowler's power play. And if they do generously give the Prowlers a shot on goal there, then it would be the first one of the power play, but I don't think they will. They switch it back to the first unit. Face off one by the Thunderbirds. Clay Keeley holds and fires it all the way down. Johnson leaves it behind the net. The final 10 seconds, tick off the Prowler's power play. Lead pass on for Graham. He pulls up in offensive territory, hassled by Panacek, who chips it over to the near side. We're back to five on five. Jones to Freeborn. Tried to the return feed, it was stuck up in a couple of sticks. But he takes the puck back for his team and he finds Adam Heinzel. Pushed up the far wall and now fed to Farmer. Thunderbirds look to go on the attack after the successful PK. Pastuka knocked Merritt down. Heinzel takes the puck, gets it to Picard, touched on for Jay. Jay gets around to the outside, couldn't get the shot off. And now Farmer up the wall, cut off by Merritt. Heinzel back at center. Now get the puck moving forward again. Grabenikov gets it out to Keplinger, working on Schumacher. Those two go in hard behind the net. Now Merritt comes flying in. Battle for the puck in the corner. Schumacher able to Get it out. He'll get the red line and rim it around. Prowler's making a wholesale change. Federley put it back deep. Graham after it. Movali gets there first. Rims it this side to Keplinger. Dumped out. Gloved down by Young. Now to Federley. Backs up, finds Young. He gets it to Matt Graham. Puck pops up in the air, Graham winds and fires it in. Six minutes gone in period number three. 
Ford backhands it out. Deck gets it back deep. Freeborn finds Merritt flying off the bench. His centering feed only found Baker though. Now Keplinger the other way with Ford. They'll feed it over there. Plenty of prowlers back and Picard steals it off the toe drag from Gus Ford. Now Port Huron on the counter. It's P Merritt with a shot blocked by Clay Keeley. Lee pass was too far ahead of Keplinger. Stump back around. Picard and Movali come together. There's Foley looking for a centering pass. That ends up getting dumped back around. Picard chips it to Jay. He'll wrap it. There's Heinzel towards the net, deflected and blockered by Frankie McClendon as that puck fluttered off the tip from somebody in the slot. Ford off the glass and out. Schumacher headed it up to Foley who kicks it to Jay. Jay walks the line, tried to dump it deep. Nate Keeley cut it off. Schnapp gets it out, Butita just couldn't catch up to it. He'll find it now. Turning below the goal line. Now Schumacher pokes it along, took a tumble. The Prowlers get it out. It's Jay and Graham, two on two rush as they hit the line. Jay dumps it deep, Graham first on it. Johnson walking. Continues, wrist shot, blocker save by McClendon. Graham to the point to Federley. Now for Freeborn, leaves it for Federley. Quick shot, and McClendon has another answer. Graham behind the net, took a look. Comes over to the near side, Johnson coming in from his defensive position. And it taken away, Bioni skies it out. Jones plays it quickly to Freeborn, up to Johnson. Three Thunderbirds back, Johnson gets it over to Merritt, looking towards the net. Now Freeborn turned it out in front, Deck off the bench, just whipped that one wide. Schnapp got it out. Here comes Panacek, four Prowlers back. Panacek had it poked off his stick, and Freeborn plays it off the far wall. Clay Keeley. He works into Prowler territory, makes a move, and Dumas flying in, couldn't get the shot on net. Nine minutes gone in period three. Not too many whistles yet, as Foley is behind the net. Feeds it out high to Young, wrist shot, glove by McClendon. He'll hang on and we'll take a timeout. 10.45 to go. In period number three, Prowler's still up a goal. You're watching Port Huron Prowler's Hockey on the PHP Network. I'm proud to serve farmers because everything they do matters. If I could choose one word to describe a farmer, I would say essential. Dedicated. Enterprising. The most creative people. They're providing food for the rest of the world. Some of the qualities I look for uh, when hiring is personality. Perseverance, someone that's determined. We want to be able to hire someone that understands what we're supporting, and ultimately that's the grower. Come fill McMoran Place at every Prowler's home game this season. General admission tickets are just $15 with discounts available for seniors, military, students, and children under 12. Upgrade your experience in one of our suites, or bring the whole squad to the game with discounts for groups of 10 or more. Find your best option to visit the Thumb Coast professional hockey team by visiting phprowlers.com and find the tickets tab, or call the box office at 810-985-6166. Secure your seats today. 10.45 to go, third period. Thunderbirds kill off a Prowler's power play and we stay one to nothing. Port Huron, deep into the third. Merritt, Panacek, in on this face off to Frankie McClendon's right. Panacek won it back, 
Clay Keeley turning on the boards. Skates out, his pass goes awry. Prowlers the other direction. Bounced up to Merritt. Gets it deep to Picard. He'll continue the cycle to Sim. Back this side, Picard. Sim again on the far wall. They continue to play catch below the goal line. Picard cycles it up. And Schumacher coming in from his defensive position gives it to Merritt who's filling in. Dumas lifts it out. Prowlers were in the midst of a change. Didn't touch anybody though, so no need for a too many men on the ice penalty. Graham settles that puck, looking for Freeborn. That hit a skate. And the Thunderbirds move the other direction. Heinzel now over to Schumacher, quick up to Freeborn. Looking for Graham, couldn't knock it down. Now Baker, off the boards and out. Young waits for it at the red line, gives it to Deck. The rookie dumps it in, finds Bioni. Worked over to Baker, over to Ford. Makes one move, and Gus Ford is off to the races. Ford to Farmer, fed it out high, Bioni loads it up, blocked down, it bounces around, Keplinger jamming away and he scores! The puck was loose in the crease. Josh Keplinger finally found it and put it home. And we're tied up at one. 2-3 wax for the Thunderbirds. And finally put home for the first of the year for Josh Keplinger. As he gets one, gets it back. We have a tied game with 9.03 to go in regulation. Clay Keeley moving the other direction. He'll dump it in. Boutita plays it around. Nate Keeley trying to kick it around behind the net. Picked up towards Clay Keeley. His shot knocked down in front. Jones plays it away from the crease. Picard, his dump, goes around behind McClendon. Play Keeley back up. Taken away by Graham. He's blown up by Nate Keeley at the blue line. Prowler still possession, and Picard dumps it in. Mo Valley, quick up, deflected into Prowler territory. Here's Heinzel playing it around towards Schumacher. Now Federley. Farmer puts it right into his own bench. We'll get a whistle and we'll take another break. Josh Keplinger has finally gotten Carolina on the board. And we are tied up at one. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. Gus Ford and Justin Bioni picking up the assists on Josh Keplinger's first of the season that tied this game just moments ago. 1-1 one, one 
deep into the third period. Prowlers with an offensive zone faceoff. They have Matt Graham's line out there against the Panacek line. Farmer trying to work it up the boards. Dumas pulls it, gets it up to Panacek. Thunderbirds trying to move up with numbers. Panacek shot held on to by Sokolov. The shot was right in his chest. So we'll get another face off this time. Deep in Prowler territory. That was the fifth shot of the period for the Thunderbirds. They're up 5-4 in shots on goal. In this, the final frame of regulation. Now Schumacher, that's it up to Shirtran, on for Foley. Foley works past Baker, he'll dump it deep. Bioni after it, trying to curl away from Jay, he'll get it over to his defense partner, Farmer. Kept in by Schumacher, leaping blocker saved by McClendon. Out to Foley, Heinzel at the point, wrist shot, deflects! And McClendon able to stop Dan Chartrand in tight. As the shot from Heinzel hit Bioni's skate, ended up right on Chartrand's stick. He wasn't expecting it as the puck changed direction. Frankie McClendon with another save. Movali wrist shot, that one also changed direction on the way through. Movali stepped in to keep the puck alive. He fired it to the far side corner. And finally it's gotten out by the Prowlers. They'll start a change. Dumped off the backboards, Deck and Pastuka tie up. One handed along for Panacek. All around the net, in for Dumas! Kicked out by Makar Sokolov. Clay Keeley plays it back in his own end. Gets it out. Settled down by Johnson. He gets it to Merritt. Flies in, right to McClendon, he'll glove it, and now Merritt getting some shoves from Movali and Keeley, right in front of Frankie McClendon. Merritt no worse for wear, but he'll head to the bench as the Prowlers switch up the forward unit. 6.02 left to go in the third period. Graham and Nate Keeley tie up. Johnson dumps it around. Chip to the wall. It comes to Federley behind the net to Graham. In front looking for Freeborn. That deflects away. Grabenikov and his stick lifted by Graham. Now Freeborn in the corner. He'll work it around the cage to Jones. And I don't think that one got all the way through. Now pops out for Batita. On for stop as Batita going to net, gets it there, but he's tied up by Jones. And now the Prowler's the other direction. Graham couldn't chip it in. Loose puck skated into by Schnapp. Schnapp gives it. Ford, couple of moves, and Sokolov makes the save. Puck squirts back out in front. And now here comes Johnson. He'll dump it in. Couple of dangerous moments there for the Prowlers. Under five to play here in regulation. Jay dangles, gives to Heinzel. Drive, deflected down, and it's pushed behind the net. Ford. In front to Bioni, he'll turn and head up ice. Start trend right on him. Now Schumacher turns it back the other way. Ford and Foley come together. Keplinger around the net. He'll gain speed moving up ice. Working on Heinzel, who stands him up. 
Foley around the boards. Movali couldn't keep it in with the glove. Now here comes Foley, dumping it in. We approach four minutes to go in regulation. Farmer, quick up to Baker. This side, Mo Valley has to come back for it. Prowlers able to get a steal. Merritt pulls up to the point. Deck wrists it off the back wall. It's Picard working it in front. Merritt took a swipe and it couldn't get it. Deck gets a stick on that pass. That was Baker who went down hard. He recollects his stick. Puck still there. Jammed up in some skates. They dig away. Mo Valley puts on a wrist shot from the point that's gloved and held by Makar Sokolov. Under three and a half to play in regulation. We have a 1-1 game here at the Annex. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. Imagine a world without pepperoni. Ooh, okay, enough of that. Now, imagine layer upon layer of pepperoni. That's Hungry Howie's Pepperoni Duo Pizza. Our fresh-made dough and 100% real mozzarella cheese topped with traditional pepperoni and a layer of our classic cup pepperoni for layer upon layer of flavor on flavor. For a limited time, just $9.99. Don't just imagine yourself enjoying one. Come get one now. Hungry? Howie's! We invite you to tune in to our next broadcast on Friday, January 6th, when the Prowlers visit the Carolina Thunderbirds. Puck drop is scheduled for 6.05 p.m., and the pregame show starts at 5.50. It's all right here on the PHP Network. And after tonight's game, should be another great one tomorrow. 3.19 left to go in the third. And not check. And Graham in on the faceoff. Graham wins it back clean. Johnson rims it up the boards. Freeborn couldn't touch it out. Now he does. And it squirts back to Bioni. Retreating into his own end. Fires it up to Panacek. Working on Johnson. Out the near side wall. Graham skates into it. Up to Jones jumping in on the play. Mitch Jones with a shot off the back glass. Freeborn recollects in the corner. Sauces it out high, jumps in a wrist shot, steered away by McClendon. And that puck comes all the way down to Prowler Ice. Johnson trying to turn it back up. Jay gets in, plays it off the far wall. Nate Keeley zooms back in, Butita rims it around. Heinzel keeps it moving. Shark Train got a piece of it, but the Valley kept it in. Nate Keeley tried to force it to the front off a stick. And now Foley looks to Jay. That was knocked out of the air by Keeley. Finally, it comes to Shark Train working on Clay Keeley, and he'll dump it in. Those two go after it together. Shark Train gets it to Merritt from the goal line. And the stick save made by McClendon. Here comes Batita leading the rush. Dumped around, Ford right off the bench, he'll skate into it. Schnapp. Around the net, out high, Farmer. Had his shot knocked down by some traffic. 95 seconds to go in regulation. It's Schnapp. Wrap around. It bounced off a skate. Sokolov got it with the pad. Farmer works into the back can right through the crease. They dig away for it on the near side wall. Johnson pulls it out. 
He'll fire a backhander right into the Carolina bench. The faceoff will come back into Prowler territory, but no delay of game call against Alex Johnson because it landed in the bench. And now a critical face-off here with just over a minute to go in a tied hockey game. Graham and Keplinger to take it. Off the draw, Graham wins it. Schumacher pulls up, finds Federley. He runs into his own man, Graham. Thunderbirds trying to take advantage, sent towards the front off of Heinzel skate. And comes back to this side. Ford on the wall, under a minute to go. Dione walks in, shoots, and a glove saved by Sokolov. Exactly 43 ticks left. Shots 42 to 40 in favor of Carolina. Both goaltenders have played outstanding tonight. Graham and Keplinger again. And now will be Federley to step in after Graham is ejected from the draw. Comes to the wall. Ford out to Farmer, his shot deflected wide. Bounces around, drops on Baker's stick, but Freeborn poked it away. Bioni with a drive off of Graham. And Matt Graham bounces it out all the way down and another face off in Prowler territory coming after the icing with 21 and a half ticks up on the clock. And timeout called by, I believe, the Prowlers here. As Port Huron looking to get its team some rest. Chris Paulin calling the timeout on the Prowlers bench. We have had a heck of a game here so far tonight. Austin Federley scored the only goal of the first period on a snipe over the glove hand of Frankie McClendon. That score held until here in the third when Josh Keplinger tied it on a goal mouth scramble. And that's where we stand 1-1 with 21 and a half seconds to go. Makar Sokolov has made 41 saves, Frankie McClendon 39. As both goaltenders certainly worthy of stars of the game in my eyes. The question is though, who will score the winner? As they exit the timeout. It will be Merritt to take this face off against Gus Ford. Fans here at the Annex making some noise. And now they blow it down. So Picard will have to step in to take the face off. And now Sim will take the draw. It's tied up, comes to the point to Clay Keeley. Rims it around, Pastuka tried to kick it out. Johnson one hands it along for Picard. Looking for Sim out of his reach. Farmer put it right back in. Johnson takes a look at the clock and he'll eat it. And we will head to overtime tonight at the Annex. 1-1 one, one. through 60 minutes of play. Aaron Winston-Salem, these two teams have put it all on the line for 60 minutes and you know, it's unfortunate that one of them will have to lose. 
And it's really unfortunate that one of these goaltenders will have to put a loss on their record after tonight's game, but at least for both teams, they get a point out of this one. As we take a quick look around the FPHL while we get set for overtime. Danbury Hattricks took care of business in Elmira, 6-1. The Rockers have tied the Watertown Wolves. That's 3-3 late in the third. Possibility for overtime there. Blue Ridge Bobcats have pulled within one. They're trailing the River Dragons 3-2. And the Baton Rouge Zydeco have a 3-2 lead on the Mississippi Seawolves, getting set for the third period. We take a look at the overtime records for these two teams. Prowlers two and three in games that have ended in overtime, and that includes one here at the Annex. Port Huron tied it with the extra attacker with under a minute to go. But Jacob Schnapp scored the winner. As the Thunderbirds are two and oh in games that have ended in overtime. Prowlers have not seen a shootout yet this season, but we're still far away from that prospect. As we get set for sudden death, three on three overtime. Sokolov in the gold crease, two hour left. Again, 41 saves for him tonight. Frankie McClendon in the gold crease to our right, 39 for him. Prowlers send out Merritt, Johnson, and Jones, who scored an overtime game winner on the power play a week ago at McMoran Place. On the other side, Panacek, Pastuka, and Clay Keeley will start things off for the Carolina Thunderbirds. And nervous energy here in the annex. Overtime is underway in the Thunderbirds. We'll get the first possession. Blake Keeley sends Panacek on his way. Panacek lost it, got it back, steps out. He'll drop it to Pestuka, wants the shot, he takes it, knocked down by Sokolov. Keeley walking, watched by Merritt. All the way around the net he goes. And now he'll send it back to Panacek. As both teams make changes, Panacek with a shot kicked out. And Jay will hop on the puck for the Prowlers. He'll cycle it back to Graham, whip up back to Dalton Jay. They're out there with Federley. Ford and Baker back defending, and Jay's shot stunned Baker for a moment. He's back to his feet. Farmer also out there for Carolina as Graham trying to turn the corner on Dawson Baker. Graham still has it below the goal line. Tried to play it off the back of the net, but Farmer takes it away. Here comes Ford with Farmer hustling to join him. Ford makes a move on Federley, couldn't get it to the forehand, take a shot. Now both Ford and Graham have lost their sticks. Ford's looking for a penalty. Both of them head to the bench. Freeborn on for the Prowlers, he has the puck. Watched by Keplinger. Now Schumacher, he'll head up ice. Frank Schumacher in front, and Frankie McClendon able to clamp the glove on top. A minute 52 gone here in overtime. Prowlers will get an offensive zone faceoff. Thunderbirds have two of the three shots so far here in the extra session. Merritt, Picard, and Schumacher out there for this draw against Keplinger, Schnapp, and Bioni. It's one cleanly back by Schnapp. Here's Keplinger. He has the Thunderbirds goal tonight, and he works in. Outside shot, and he scores. Josh Keplinger ends it. 
in overtime, his second of the night, and the Thunderbirds come back to steal this game from the Prowlers. What a shot by Keplinger as he just got a tiny bit of space. That's all he needed to fire it to the top corner. And a frustrated group of Prowlers heads to the locker room. A little bit stunned after this one as Josh Keplinger has scored his first two goals of the season to win the game for the Carolina Thunderbirds tonight. Heartbreak for the Port Huron Prowlers who held a one to nothing lead deep into period number three. But they fall tonight. 2-1 in the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. And the nightmares in this building continue for Port Huron. Not just this season, but historically. They'll have to come back tomorrow and see if they can get their first win over the Thunderbirds this season. But after a game like tonight, certainly deflating one for the Prowlers as they do pick up a point, but they drop to 10, 10, and four, 29 points now. And they see their two game win streak snap. Uh, the Thunderbirds now have a two game win streak of their own, 18, five and zero. Oh, now 10 and two here at the Annex. And it's all thanks to two goals from Josh Keplinger, who wasn't on the roster until December the 30th when he signed in lieu of the Thunderbirds having a short roster. He just came to fill a spot and he filled it great here tonight. Two goals, the tying one midway through the third, the winner in overtime. And the Thunderbirds come away with a two to one game, two one win in what was an instant classic. And I'm shocked that Makar Sokolov doesn't even get the third star of the game. They give it to Gus Ford who had an assist, but Sokolov made 43 saves tonight. Frankie McClendon, the second star with 40 saves. Josh Keplinger, the first star with two goals. But of course, you sometimes get that home ice bias with the stars of the game, and that may be what happened tonight. But Makar Sokolov absolutely deserved a star of the game tonight. Again, 43 saves for him. He was the Prowler's best player all night long. And when it felt like the Prowlers were shutting down the Thunderbirds all night, then Sokolov looked like he was in a zone for the entire game. They just get one to force overtime, and then again in the extra session, they just get one. And Carolina comes away with the victory tonight. Again, tune in tomorrow night when these teams do it again. 6.05 puck drop and a 5.50 pregame. We'll have it for you here on the PHP Network. And that will be the final game of the regular season between the Prowlers and the Thunderbirds. But for now, thank you to the Carolina Thunderbirds media crew for allowing me the use of their cameras tonight. I'm Will Wiggleman. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time right here on the PHP Network.